there's been a, a Unity Commission meeting uh, in, Los, in Nevada uh, this week. Uh, Nomiki is on the Unity Commission. Before she joined the Young Turks, she was a surrogate for Sanders' presidential campaign, so Bernie uh, picked her to be on the Unity Commission. Uh, John Idarola from TYT was there, as well as Emma uh, has been covering it. So, you know, they're there to talk about all the things, open, caucus, open primaries versus um, closed primaries, primaries, caucuses, superdelegates, all those things. Uh, they've been putting up videos on the main Young Turks channel, so go check those out. But Tom Perez thought this would be the time to basically purge <laughs> the leadership of the DNC of people who supported Bernie Sanders or supported Keith Ellison, uh, the deputy chair who ran against Tom Perez uh, for the chairmanship. So, from NBC, a shakeup is underway at the DNC as several key longtime officials have lost their posts exposing a still raw rift in the party and igniting anger among those in its progressive wing who see retaliation for their opposition to DNC chairman Tom Perez. So NBC already doing the he said, she said, who the progressive wing who see it as retaliation. Well, what do you call it? I'll tell you in a minute. The ousters come ahead of the DNC's first meeting in Las Vegas, Nevada, since Perez took over as chairman with a pledge this year to unite a party that had become badly divided during the brutal Bernie Sanders-Hillary Clinton 2016 primary race. Complaints began immediately after party officials saw a list of Perez's appointments to DNC committees and his roster of 75 at-large members who are chosen by the chair. So, obviously, he's picking as many progressive people as possible, as many Bernie supporters as possible, because he is the most popular politician in the nation, right? The removal and demotion of a handful of veteran operatives stood out, as, di as did what critics charge is the over-representation of Clinton-backed members on the Rules and Bylaws Committee, which helped set the terms for the party's presidential primary. That's interesting. An over-representation of Clinton-backed members on the Rules and Bylaws Committee, which helps set the terms for the party's presidential primary. Now, who is somebody that he uh, put on the Rules and Bylaws Commission? Take a guess who he put on the rule, Rules and Bylaws Commission. I'll give you a few guesses before I tell you. Rules and bylaws. Come on, folks. Who did he put? Who did he put on the on the committees? Jennifer? No, not Jennifer. Do 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 do. <whistles> Who did he put? Up. Oh. So Donna Brazil was nominated to be a DNC delegate. The same Donna, Donna Brazil who is disgraced. Serving on the campaigns of numerous failed presidential candidates, she also worked, hold on, uh, DNC, uh, oh, so you could cheat. Donna Brazil is a lifetime Democrat serving on the campaigns of numerous failed presidential candidates. She also worked. So now, CNN, she passed the questions. Uh, to Hillary Clinton during the campaign, but she is now one of the delegates to the DNC. So, you know, when you do wrong, when you unethically pass along questions, when you were literally working for a campaign while you were supposed to be a neutral DNC member, you get rehired. That's just standard operating procedure. So, those who have been pushed out of the DNC leadership include Ray Buckley, the New Hampshire Democrat chairman and longtime DNC official who ran against Perez for chair before backing Keith Ellison for chair, James Zogby, the former president of the Arab American Institute and prominent Sanders backer, is no longer co-chair of the Resolutions Committee and is off the Executive Committee, a spot he has held since 2001. He's also a progressive member of the Unity Commission, alongside Nomiki. Alice Germond, the party's longtime former secretary and a vocal Ellison backer who, has remo who was removed from her at-large appointment to the DNC. Hmm, you see a trend here, folks? Barbara, Barbara Kaspar Cyperstein, 
who supported Ellison and Buckley, was tossed from the executive committee. So that's four people who supported Ellison, uh, two of which I know supported Bernie during the campaign. Hmm, interesting. The moves exposed a rift in the partnership between Perez and his deputy chair, Ellison, who have publicly broadcast their bromance since Perez tapped Ellison for the post in a show of unity after their hard-fought race this year for the party's chairmanship. Quote, I'm concerned about the optics and I'm concerned about the impact, Zogby said. I want to heal the wound of 2016. Buckley said that while he understands Perez as a chairman could do as he pleases, it's all just very disappointing. Germond has been at the DNC since the 1980s and was a very, bulk, very vocal backer of Ellison. Quote, it is quite unusual for a far, former party officer who has been serving on the DNC for forever to just be left out in the cold without even a call from the chairman, Germond said. So I assume, I assume it had something to do with my support for Keith. I bet you're right about that one. I understand that I've fought very hard for Keith Ellison, and I understand to the winners go the spoils, she added. The DNC denied any retaliation, saying that the changes were an effort to diversify and freshen the party's leadership, and that all the party's officers had a chance to offer input. They touted new additions like Marisa Richmond, a millennial black transgender activist, and the first Dreamer member, Ellie Perez, to point out the DNC's efforts at diversity. This year's slate of at-large DNC member nominees reflects the unprecedented diversity of our party's coalition, said DNC spokesperson Michael Tyler. Quote, the slate's double, this, this slate doubles millennial and Native American at-large representation, provides unprecedented representation for our allies in the labor community, and increases the presence of Puerto Rican at-large members at a time when the Trump administration refuses to take responsibility for the millions of Americans who are still suffering through a major humanitarian crisis. Also, uh, they removed a, tr the, a, a transgender member, the first transgender member, Cyperstein, the DNC's first transgender member, said, I can't speak for Tom, but you talk about diversity. I am extremely diverse. Jewish, veteran, transgender, lesbian, grandparent, small business owner. You know what your problem is, Cyperstein, when you're saying you are the first transgender member and you are extremely, con uh, you're extremely uh, diverse. You're Jewish, L'chaim, I'm Jewish too, veteran, transgender, lesbian, grandparent, and small business owner. But you know what you're, you are that doesn't agree with the DNC's uh, version of diversity? You back Keith Ellison. And you're probably supported, you probably supported Bernie Sanders. I don't know for a fact. So what do you have here? What do you have here? And this, isn't, this is a little dangerous for me to say, but I'm going to keep it real. So you have them saying, because they added a, who did they add here? Uh, doo -doo -doo. They added a millennial black transgender activist. Now, what they're doing is basically, you know, you put someone like me in a bad position. I'm not going to criticize them adding a millennial black transgender activist. I think that's a good thing. I'm not going to criticize them for adding Native American uh, delegates or leaders. That's a great thing. I'm not going to criticize them for adding uh, Puerto Rican delegates, although it seems a little political, don't you think, that now they're adding Puerto Rican delegates to basically score points against Trump's awful uh, response to Puerto Rico? So what they're doing is playing identity politics. It's good that they are diversifying the coalition, but... Who are they getting rid of to diversify that coalition? Say it with me now. Bernie supporters and Keith Ellison supporters. So, do I know for a fact whether the black transgender activists they're adding, or the Native American activists they're adding, or um, more millennials they're adding? Do I know for a fact whether those people uh, support Bernie or are more Clinton establishment? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Do I know for a fact whether those people, what are their top issues is campaign finance reform? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. 
But based on Tom Perez's history, based on the DNC, I don't, it doesn't seem to me that they are adding people whose number one issue is getting money out of politics. Does that come across to you that that's going to be on top of their agenda? I don't think so. I do not think so. So the bottom line is this, folks. Tom Perez, who's talking about unity, you don't, you don't purge leadership of people who supported Keith Ellison, people who support Bernie Sanders, of the first transgender activist or member of the DNC, who ironically was a big vocal supporter of Keith Ellison. And by the way, I got to keep it real. Keith Ellison, like, why are you putting up with this? Why are you continuing to be used? I get the emails from the DNC, and a lot of them come from Keith Ellison asking for money. I don't understand it. Unless there's some political angle here that I don't see, doesn't make a lot of sense. So, unity, actions speak louder than words, and this is not unity. And if the Democrats, so in 2020, if they elect as uh, the general, as the, uh, if they push like a Cory Booker or Kamala Harris against Trump, and then they lose again, don't blame me. Don't blame the young Turks. Don't blame progressives. Blame actions like this, because you are spitting on progressives, and you are telling progressives, you could kind of like, you could kind of come and stand there, but you're not part of our club, and we don't accept you, because it's more important to us to keep the money flowing than cater and move towards the exploding progressive movement led by Bernie Sanders.